All right, here we go. It is Wednesday, April 10th. My name is AJ Writes Crypto. Welcome to the show. Let's get into this damn thing. Sounds good to me, right? Well, this is my final live stream of the week. Will I maybe do an impromptu thing from Vegas? Oh, I don't know. Probably. Sounds like something I do. But I also have, um, you know, flying out to Vegas tomorrow morning for UFC 300 shenanigans. We're going to uh, the press conference. We're going Thursday, the weigh-ins Friday, the big fight on Saturday. I mean, the whole card is just completely stacked. The first fight of the night is like ex-champions fighting each other. Like, it's literally insane. Um, you know, it's 300. It's going to be nuts. Uh, I also worked my worked my V-Chain Magic. Got one of my really good friends, Cooksey. Uh, he's a motocross YouTuber who also has an MMA channel. Got worked worked my magic. Got him a ticket. Got him a ticket. So because uh, he lives in Vegas, so you know I'm gonna hang out with one of my good good buddies from the Moto World as well. Gonna be a good time. Big shout out to V Chain. They absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm too excited. Um, in Vegas, I will be interviewing Jake, who is like the you know one of the people very high up the ladder at V Chain. Someone who's gonna be more forward facing. At VeChain, uh, lead communications advocate person, really cool guy. Cool as they come. Cool as they come. I've become friends with Jake over time. I actually met Jake for the first time at Rare Evo in Denver. In Denver, and it was right after I put out my VeChain price prediction back at Hit Network. And I had so many questions about how the the two token setup works and you know how the buyback of v chain from v thor served as a burn mechanism i had so many questions for jake and he was like no one asks these kinds of questions i was like right <laughs> that's why we're having this conversation and you know people will judge you by the level of questions you ask i can tell if someone has done their homework or is just being lazy based off the level of question they ask me and um you know come correct come correct so you know i've had this relationship with v chain for a while i'm super excited about it i'm going to do it uh interview for jake and the thing is is that you guys might have said oh i already saw the interview with sunny so you know this is less important well well <sighs> yes i mean yes sunny's the founder but 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 there is some alpha big old alpha that you can't know about for 48 more hours and it's pretty cool it's pretty cool what v chain is doing um i mean they're kind of hitting a lot of the narratives we got you know the rwa the tokenization of everything um sector that that is a big thing they've been doing i mean they've been in supply chain for quite a long time i mean sunny came from louis vuitton he worked at louis vuitton you know before v chain so, you know, he he has a lot of experience in, you know, that that area. And, you know, I did um, even going to make a video on how to tokenize. You know, I want to give away a pair of signed Gilbert Burns shorts. Gilbert Burns is a UFC fighter, uh, one of my favorite fighters. He unfortunately lost to Kamzat Shemaev. I bet on that fight in Atlantic City over two years ago. And uh, I have, so I want a signed pair of his shorts and I'm going to make a video tokenizing that asset. So you guys can learn how to, you know, tokenize. Uh, like say you have a signed jersey or like you know memorabilia or anything like that you can you know tokenize it yourself which is pretty punk rock in my opinion and uh yeah so uh gonna be doing that big announcement from v chain that is coming you'll know about that on friday i will make videos about it you will see uh i'm you know shout out to them i'm excited to go to vegas all right uh so i may or may not do a live stream from there but there will be there will be um content while i'm gone up oh, there's some alarms oh my ears my poor ears okay we'll talk about that alarm in a minute all right also want to talk about um also want to talk about the video i made yesterday the video i made yesterday was no joke i i, I don't like when uh it does it does it is unfortunate where you know you kind of tell people things are going to pump and they love you you tell people watch out for this they hate you and that's fine. That's fine. At least like when things happen, I can go back to that point in time and say, you see that video I made? I tried to tell you. So it, it's not really about that, to be honest. Like I, I'm just trying to, you know how I want to help you guys make money? Well, I also want to help you not lose money too. 
you know, that's that's a part of crypto is actually walking away with the money you make. That's actually the most important part of crypto. If you hold a bag and it pumps 40 percent, it it doesn't matter until that money is out of crypto and helping your life get better. That That's the part I actually want to help you with. So you can be willing to to, um, you know, I've been around the block before. Um, it's all good. So uh, I'm just going to I'm I'm trying. I'm trying to help just as much as I'm trying to help you protect just as much as I'm trying to help you pump. So um to, to everybody in the chat. Mr. Mojo Ryzen, Ellie, JC, uh he doesn't really care for the ESG stuff. V chain trying to. Well, it's just sustainability. It's like it's like we only just we only just have one planet, dude. <laughs> we only have this one planet, this one singular place where we live. And so far the humankind, human beings have done a pretty good job messing it up. And the fact that they're trying to incentivize millions of people to make small corrections that make a big difference for the sustainability of the planet, uh, that's pretty noble. That, that's pretty cool. Not to mention BSG, the Boston Consultant Group. Uh, people sleep on how big of a deal the, the partnership with the Boston Consulting Group is. Uh, look, Google them. Google them. Holy shit is, is the answer to that Google. and. They have done studies that show that the sustainability sector is going to be worth, you know, 15, 16 trillion dollars in the next five, six years. And VeChain gets 1%, 2%, 0.5% of, of that sector. Look at the market. Oh, yeah. Because J- JC in the chat, he just knows these things don't work. He's smarter than the, than the Boston Consulting Group. Okay. All right. Going to keep moving. Damn, I, I, you know, you know, you know, all right. Vegas, the fight is in Miami. No, it's not. The fight's in Vegas. Nice hoodie there, sir. Appreciate you, leg bite. It's that, that Cardano drip. That Cardano drip. God has a plan to fix the world, man. I hope so. I pray for it every day. All right. So Steve Jones wants a portfolio review. I'll do it at the end of the show. I got you at the end of the show. Uh, let me take a screenshot of it really quick, and then we'll get into the news. <sighs> screenshot, but oh man, it was a bad screenshot. Okay, almost done. Um, okay, I'm done. Can you show the snack girl chart? I'm, I'm going to pass on that one. I'm going to pass on that one. Um, <laughs> Ellie, you're hilarious. All right. So got so much news to talk about. So crypto, uh, you guys have probably seen it. You probably have looked at your portfolio at some point today. I, I imagine, at least I hope you have, that would be a, a good thing to, to keep track of what you're doing. Um, not the best, not the best Bitcoin, you know, below 68. I'm in the 68s. I mean, ETH under 3,500 BNB under six Solana under 170. Wink, wink. Yep. 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 Talked about that. Um, Polygon under 90 near back in the sixes. Uh, I mean, a lot of things down on the 24 hour, pretty big time. Um, V chain still in the fours. The graph at 32, at least it woke up a little bit. Phantom still holding. Had a phantom scalp last night that played out and then came back. Um Algorand at 22. I didn't see Hedera. I want to look at Hedera. There it is. 10. Okay. Still above 10. It has been scaring me. My my Hedera, my concerned Hedera alarm did go off. Uh, I'm glad it held. Let's look at the gainers and the losers. Um, let's, uh, scroll this all on over top 300. Take a quick look at that. All right. Athena still waking up blocks, MX cat in a dog's world. Okay. Up 10%. Love to see it. Shout out to the cats out there. Shout out to the cats. Hell yeah. Uh, top 100. All right. Yeah. We got Athena nervous network already woke up a little bit. Ton coin holding strong phantom right where it was yesterday. Uh, a lot of just two percent winners, nothing crazy. The right side of the screen is actually where the story is. Aptos down ten, 
with the, uh, almost a, back to 350 gala down um uh, polka dot core near all down four or five percent algorand four Pyth four and Pyth has some news i'll tell you about uh the graph for yeah i mean this is um a little bleed out continuing the downtrend as expected as expected so why is big why is crypto crashing why is crypto crashing well let's talk about it bitcoin and ethereum dive as u.s inflation remains at 3.5 percent inflation is still a problem Inflation is going to continue to be a problem. Um, at the time of writing, yeah, Bitcoin is in the 68s, Ethereum's 34s. All right. There's those damn alarms. I have so many alarms going off. Wow, the ES1. Okay, we're pivoting. One sec. We can talk about this in a minute. Got to look at that chart. That's the problem with setting this many up. There's another one. Okay, I heard you. H bar and algo both crossing trend lines. Great, just great. Uh, ES one exclamation point. Uh, I know you can't see it yet. One second. Share the step instead. Two hour. Okay. So you know, guys know this is how I like to look at the stock market. It's a twenty four hour chart, kind of like crypto. Um, wow. So basically, the ES one has had this you know very long uptrend going on for a while where this line is the twenty top of the 2021 bull run the s p and the es1 have both been in uh all-time high price discovery mode for quite some time now and uh we we have alarm breaks up with alarms this is insane this is i should just stop the live stream and start trading like a madman um yeah, so at least it's trying to get back above that line, but the fact that lost it kind of says it all. Kind of says it all. This is dangerous. I'm not going to lie. Like people, and this is kind of like some of the gist of the video that I made yesterday is that like there has to be a point where the piper gets paid on these corrections. Like you, we can't just go like completely with zero consequence this entire time. You know what I mean? Like there, there has to be a point where uh even if you just look at the straight up s p all right straight up s p 500 okay i really want to kind of paint this picture for you because i don't think people really get it all right so here is here's the top of the 2021 bull run here is where we broke out of that in price discovery up and to the right now we have you know cpi reports coming in not really good for the markets as inflation is still an issue and I want to and I want to remind you of something is that this this bear market basically a direct result of the measures taken to battle inflation. I had to make sure I word that properly. Okay? So um what they do is they increase the interest rates to give power to the dollar. A strong dollar is a weak market. And a weak market is a bear market, okay? And a, a weak stock market, consequently, you know, if you look at, you know, what was this right here? December 21st, all right? And then October 22nd, when we bought them, very close to crypto. Don't tell me that, the, that crypto and the stock market are not correlated. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Correlation is not causation, but they are risk assets. And as more institutional money enters Bitcoin, a uh, wink wink and etf they're only going to get more correlated as we go I, I i people will try to argue me on that ben will try to argue me on that i will vehemently disagree just look at the chart just look at the chart all right so this this bear market was a result of them strengthening the dollar period okay and now we have gone you know there have been there have been some small corrections there we haven't you know there, there has been some falls, you know, here to here, you know, there to there, like little tiny ones. But for the most part, since on the S&P 500, since October of 2023, we have been putting in higher highs and higher lows consistent with not much correction. That's basically unheard of. OK, now in price discovery, there has not been a fall like this at all. There have been little ones, you know, 2%, but th this one's different 
because it's putting in lower lo, lower highs and lower lows. And I this is why I like the the S the ES1 chart because it doesn't have the gaps like the S&P. All right. And you know, it's putting in short term line it, it's going like this. Yeah, like like you know, so here so you're in a downtrend until you're not, right? We're in a downtrend until we're not. So if you want to follow the S&P and its correlation to crypto, set an alarm on this. Set an alarm on that. And let's hope that the bottom one doesn't go off and the top one does. All right. Uh, I mean, this isn't the best thing we want to see. Also, what I want to say is that, you know, it has been holding the 50-day EMA. So anytime you see on any chart, the price action, bounce off the 50, bounce off the 50, bounce off the 50, bounce off the 50. Talk, feels like a hip-hop song. Shout out to 50 Cent. All right. That's bullish continuation since, you know, it crossed, you know, bull cross back in November. And ever since then, it has not even come close to testing the 200 day AMA, not even relatively close. We only lost the 50 like right here and for like a second right here. All right. Compare that to this, to this. We have haven't been both this far below the 50 since last year. Matters, matters. Okay. Keep an eye on it. All right. And so why is this happening? Bitcoin and Ethereum sank lower, each dropping more than 2% immediately after the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics announced that Coin announced that the consumer price index increased 0.4% in March. That means inflation last month was virtually unchanged from February and still is at 3.5%, according to the new BLS data. Crypto has fallen, you know, obviously. Higher inflation rates are bad news for the crypto markets and stocks for that matter. Because as long as inflation remains high, it's unlikely that the U.S. Federal Reserve will lower the federal interest rates. We've been waiting on a rate cut all year, and they keep pushing it back, pushing it back. The longer interest rates remain high, the more it strengthens the case for traditional safe havens like treasury bonds over crypto assets. Of course, they're going to slip that line in there. Come back to bonds. We're relevant. I promise. I promise we're relevant. Buy me. Buy me. No. Um. So the small bit of good news is reported isn't entirely unexpected, which should re reduce volatility. Well, that's nice. Ahead of this morning's announcement, analyst forecast March data would show inflation has risen 3.4 compared to the same last time compared to the same time last year. And the core CPI, which leaves out volatile food and energy prices, was expected to drop from 3.8 to 3.7 over the same period. Jerome Powell, our good friend Jerome, recently said at a Stanford U University event that he is confident the fed won't raise rates until the near term but he added that there's also no rush to reduce rates either and that's kind of the, the banger of this story uh that's why I, I read the whole thing that's it that's the story there's no rush to reduce rates either and 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 uh i will say it's just too soon to say whether the re recent inflation readings are more than just a bump just the bump he said all right so that that's the story that's the story uh and fine i'll, I'll end with this the u.s borough of labor statistics re released an update to its employment data last week showing that payrolls had risen in march and that the unemployment rate was relatively unchanged at 3.8 percent the news was not well received in the crypto markets which slumped last week and then we had a bounce back and now we have bad news and we slump again <sighs> Here, let me ask you this question so you know they do all these measures to, to you know to to fight inflation to strengthen the dollar okay Inflation doesn't change. If we weren't in an election year, would they continue raising rates? Think about that. Think about that. It's an election year. So the Biden administration, the powers to be, are going to bolster the numbers and say, look at what we did. It. We did so good. Look at it. Look at this statistic and this statistic and this statistic. That's what they do. They will, you know, kind of paint this picture that everything's just dandy and he knows how to walk off the stage and he's never fallen down any stairs and that the numbers are good. No, no. But what is concerning me is that sh wait, should they be raising rates right now? Or, and are they just not raising rates because of the election coming? That's kind of what I'm worried about. Um, I hope that he's not setting it up. So if it changes hands to the next person, whoever it is, that it's just he's just going to be handing him a shit show 
which has happened, you know, basically every time the presidency has switched hands anyway. Uh, but I, I just want the economy to be in a, a in a condition where it, it does. The story doesn't have to be a rewrite and the story can continue forward. Um, that that would be best case scenario. Uh, it would be better to see, you know, the next person in line have room to grow and not have to fix the mess. You know, if there's a difference between fixing the mess or doing the next thing. So there's that, too. So, yeah, that explains a lot of why crypto is um, is what it is. All right. Uh, taking a quick look at the chat here. Uh, Matthew Barnes Fed has to cut rates eventually per interest payments that serve the debt. If not, government budget will go up more. One trillion right now. Oh, for sure. I mean, think about how much more they have to pay. I mean, think about how much debt America's in. You know, you've seen the debt clock. It's just going up. You know what I mean? And when they increase the interest rates, they just are making it worse for themselves to pay it back. It's just a big circle of this is why we shouldn't inflate money. It's a big circle of why, you know, scarcity matters. You know, value matters. This is why we have crypto. This is why we're in crypto. Seriously. This is why we're here. This is why all 227 of you should smash the like button because I'm literally on a life mission to teach crypto to as many human beings as I possibly can to help them get out of the nine to five matrix. I talked to a friend yesterday, wealthy guy, wealthy guy, good friend. And basically saying like, man, like I, I, this world's crazy, bro. Like it's crazy. Like, like my, you know, I like, I have like my sister and her boyfriend and everything. Like if we didn't help them out, like, I don't even know how they get by. And it's not like they're not trying. They work hard. They work overtime. But I don't know how they do. How would they get by without without my help? And and it's crazy that that is the situation for so, so, so many people. I, I, I don't know the exact statistic. Don't quote me. But I think it's like 70 percent, maybe 70 percent of Americans cannot afford an unexpected five hundred dollar bill, five hundred bucks. 70 percent you know i don't know if that's the exact quote but that is something i heard i, I watched this uh podcast yesterday uh man i, I forget the guy's name matthew some santa i forget good good podcast i i followed him and it was like this like statistic where he was like interviewing women about like you know their their idea of like the ideal man or whatever like saying like you know, like how much does the average man in America make? Like what percentage of guys are, you know, between uh, 30 and 50 years old are taller than six one and make more than $70,000 a year? You, you want to guess what that statistic is? What percentage of guys, men, are between 30 and 50, are taller than six one and make more than $70,000 a year? Point. 5%. I think it was 0.5%. What? <laughs> like what? That that's crazy. That that's insane. And then they also have the statistics that the average average American the average American male makes $37,000 a year. And when you think to yourself, well, you know, my rent's 1500, like it it, it hurts me to know how many people are struggling it it hurts me in here to know how many people in our own country are struggling to to just get by and dude like i've been there i know what that feels like big time big time when i was in my early 20s wasn't easy guys was not easy and if i didn't have the support system i had phew, it would have been worse you know and, you know, I think, you know, in crypto, it is easy to lose sight of like the value of the dollar. You know, it is easy to take things for granted. You know, I, um, you know, I've, I've done extremely well this year. This is the best year I've ever had this year. And it, you know, I, I, I have to step out sometimes and kind of think to myself, like, wow, like this is great, but like, you gotta you gotta you gotta play this aj you gotta play this smart and not only that you have to help as many people as you can 
really try to help as many people as you can. And that's why I wake up every morning and I drive here and I grab this microphone and, you know, I, I do the show because, you know, I used to be the person that was sitting at home or had a headphone in at work or whatever. And I listened to Ben and I listened to Ben and I was just the guy in the chat and I decided, dude, I'm going to figure this out. I am going to do this and study and think and focus as hard as I can until I get to a point where I could help the next person. You know, it's not impossible, everybody. It's not impossible, you know? So I want to keep going. But this stuff has all kind of just hit me sideways. And I, you know, it just kind of makes me, it makes me recalibrate and be like, this is why you're doing this. You are you are here to help the next person come come through. And, you know, or the next group of people. You know, I want to help as many people as I literally, I possibly can. And, uh, you know, that's why I wear, you know, crypto merch every day. You'd be surprised, you know, go into Target, go into uh, the airport, go into wherever. When someone says, hey, like, oh, yeah, like Bitcoin, like, hey, like, do you do that? I've been, I've been thinking about forever, like, you know, talk, talk to that person, start that conversation, get them to, you know, that, you know, that's how I did it. And that, and that's a, a, a quick way to, you know, kind of break the ice with people is to wear crypto merch. I do it all the time. Not even shilling my own stuff, just any crypto merch. It, it's a good way to start the conversation. I got some portfolios that came in. It is Wednesday, not a portfolio day, but it is my last live stream of the week. So I will do these three. I got Mackie. I got the first guy that sent it. And I got this third one here because I'm screenshotting Mackie. Um, and then th I'm doing those three at the very end of the show and Ivan. And then that's it. All right. So I will do these three, but no more portfolios. I say that every time and they just keep on coming in. All right. Mackie's there. Oh. Ivan is there. All right. I'll take care of those at the end. Cool. So let's keep it rolling here. Got about 250 people in the house right now. You guys are amazing. Uh, make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I I'd really, really appreciate that. On our way to uh, 13 and a half. I'd love to get there. Uh, you know, trying to get his 15,000, trying to just keep it rolling, trying to keep it rolling, man. Um, I, I do appreciate you all. Uh, Jared Moore, where did you get that hoodie? Uh, sponsor of the show, cryptochips.io, cryptochips.io, really good friends of mine. They help design the get rich or get wrecked merch. Um, I still have the Grogger merch on that site for now, but you know, all good. Um, cool. So. Going to keep the stories rolling. To put this in perspective, you know, uh, to, to kind of hit a little bit on what I talked about yesterday. I know you guys can't see it yet. I'm uh, setting it up one second. But, um, you know, I am a little concerned. It, it's hard to not be right now, to be honest with you. When you look at Bitcoin, when you look at Bitcoin, and you realize that, yes, there has been, you know, corrections from here to here. You know, there has been, you know, some shots down, you know, but like, look at this run. Look at this run. You know, from from when it really kind of started going to the top, we're talking 171 days. You know, from the bottom of this to the top, yeah, we're talking about 117 days. From th from this bottom to this top, oh, you know, it's been about 184 days, 184 days, which is longer than these ones. And that's just measuring from here. Um, look, just look at the chart and you're going to tell me that we're not going to have that or that or that. You know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I hate being the one to tell you. I hate being that person. I am not a perma bear. Long term, I am bullish. Long term. But understand, this is 2025 June right here. So this is August. So we're really, really over here. This is the bull run. Okay. And, you know, it, it's there's really not a scenario where we just go. There has to be some sort of finagling okay um 
I feel like the floor itself could be a bit higher because of the ETF money. I don't think that Wall Street plays the long game. Wall Street plays the long game. So they're not buying at, you know, 60,000 and selling at 64. No, no. Wall Street is playing the long game. So I think the overall base floor level of Bitcoin is going to be higher than it's ever been. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to wash out open interest. It's not, it doesn't mean that they're not going to, you know, try to scare retail. They're going to try to talk you out of going to the top. That's what's about to happen. They are going to talk you out of going to the top. And if you go back and look at the chart, man, like, you know, I talked about this in the show. If you look at, you know, how long it took from once the touch of the 50 EMA to the 200, 23% drop in 22 days, touch of the 50 EMA to the 200, uh, you know, 14% drop in 20 days. You know, that that is that is just real. That is real. So when we kind of zoom in here big time on where Bitcoin is now, uh, you know, we have, first of all, look at the oscillator. Big up, big up. Anchor wave, trigger wave, trigger wave, getting progressively smaller. Do have a red dot on the daily right there as well. This line is just the top of the 2021 bull run, just as a basic support resistance level. All right. and. Um, the what is worrying me is what I like about this is that we have this little uptrend, all right, kind of in like a not exactly a symmetrical triangle, but close to a symmetrical triangle. And Bitcoin is in a situation where it's going to break up this way or break down that way. And this whole time we've done this riding above the 50 EMA in a situation where we lose this level. Not saying it's 100% going to happen, but I, I am saying that in that situation, and we test the 50 EMA, I want you to remember how long it took to, for the 200 to get tested. It doesn't take long at all. All right. Zooming in on Bitcoin, um, you know, it's in this triangle, man. Here it is. It, it is kind of all over the place right now. Um, you know, and, and you know, and I and I'm saying this with. You know, just I don't want people to take, think I'm like being doomsday. I, I, I'm not saying we're going to 40,000. I just want you guys to be aware, aware of the implications if we lose these certain levels. I, I mean, if, if you if you want to be an investor that, you know, you, 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 I'm riding it until Q4 or 25 and whatever happens, happens. Let the let the chips fall where they may. If that's your approach. Cool. All right. Send it. I'm good with that. If you're taking a long-term approach, you don't want to play the game, that's totally fine with me. You're going to do fine. But when the day comes, you wake up and you look at your phone and your entire portfolio is down 30, 35%. You're going to have to ride that out. And then you're also going to have to talk yourself into holding after that. You have to talk yourself out of taking your money, what's left and running. That's that's a factor. Um, I'm I'm kind of in the theory where if the top of the bull runs project to be Q4, right? If I could get out and say there's a 25% drop, a 25% drop, then you're never going to sell the, sell the top. You're never going to buy the bottom. The money in crypto is always made in the middle, right? So I'm saying that if I could get out, have the market fall 8%, 7% without me, get back in. I just bought 7% more algo, 7% more H bar, 7% more graph, 7% more everything. That's kind of what I'm thinking. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I haven't completely decided when to pull the trigger. Obviously, you guys will know. You will know. But in a situation where, you know, say Bitcoin breaks down, um, really the the level to lose is this one. This is this is more of a pattern idea, okay? Because this, you know, we are, have been putting in higher, high, higher lows. We have been putting in higher lows. And that's great. That's good to see. But in a situation where we fell, all right, losing this low would suck. But losing this low is lose this level. Let me say this better. Lose the uptrend. We're scared. Lose the uptrend. We're concerned. Lose this level. We're scared. That level 
is 30, excuse me, is 60,983. It even goes over and touches here too. That's a big support resistance level for Bitcoin. And you know, if you kind of can, can take the volume into effect here, you consider the volume. Uh, why isn't that loading? Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Volume. I would kind of like to consult with you. There you are. There's my guy. What's up, Mr. Volley? My little volleyball. So, I mean, this is why, because you know, here's this little bit of volume here, and then it just kind of drops off until we have this spike here. And you know what's interesting about this spike here? Look to the right of the screen. Look at this. You know, Bitcoin stuck, stuck around here because there was volume there. And then it went straight through all this because there was not volume there. That's how volume works. And this is called a low volume node, a low volume node. All right. So that's why I'm so worried about losing this level because just as fast as Bitcoin came up, it's just as fast as Bitcoin came down. And believe, bet your bottom dollar that if Bitcoin goes from 68,000 to 51,000, your altcoin bag is looking worse. Is looking, looking worse. Crypto junkie, no one's selling until 2025. Most of these people aren't using as much money as you, AJ Chilbro. Okay, uh, uh, that's fair. That that's fair. But do you think people with multi-million dollar bags aren't watching the show right now? Do you think people that have hundred six-figure, seven-figure daily fluctuations of their portfolio aren't watching the show? I have to make the content for everybody. Yeah, you're going to have a different a different strategy based off of your bag for sure. For sure. I talk about that every day. But I I I have to make the content for everybody. If I can protect, if I can help somebody not lose $500,000 in 6 hours, damn straight. I'm going to say what's on my mind. 100%. 100%. You know, Brett Johnson, I've lost $225,000 in a day. Uh, I'm watching with a six-figure bag right there. I I have um, multiple people that have platinum memberships in my Telegram group. Multi-million dollar bags. Multi-million dollar bags. And we, you know, it, it's a thing, guys. It, it's a thing. This is crypto. So, you know, I, I, I it's not like I, I don't, I can't. Every sentence I say can't appease every bag. So I, I am just going to say generally what's on my mind. And, and I hope I hope you, you understand that. So. Um, all right. So I'm going to keep going. I have a bunch of news stories I didn't even get to. And it's already 1114. Kind of been super introspective today. But it's OK. Going to run through these pretty quick. Um, and then I'll do a little bit of TA. And then I'll do the portfolio. This might go over a little bit today. Bitcoin having nine days away, guys. Nine days away. This is a big factor. This is insane. The fact we're still pre-having is pretty crazy. But the fact, once the having is over, a new countdown starts at 18 months. Because every, every time before this time, 18 months after the having has been basically the top. The past three times. Okay? That's big. That's big. Um, author Hayes issues a warning saying raging Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and crypto fire sale could be coming. Um, however, he you know does not plan to short the market himself. He's just abstaining from trading until the next month. Author Hayes, the Bitcoin block reward is forecast to have on April twentieth. This is seen as a bullish catalyst for crypto markets. I agree. It will pump the prices in the medium term. However, the price action directly before and after could be negative. The narrative of the having being a positive for crypto prices is well entrenched when most market participants agree on a certain outcome. The opposite usually occurs that, uh, I, as much as I don't want to agree with Arthur Hayes, he's right about that. Uh, that is why I believe Bitcoin and crypto prices will generally slump around the having, given that the having occurs at a time when dollar liquidity is tighter than usual. It will add a propellant to a raging fire sale of crypto assets. The timing of the having adds further weight to my decision and to abstain from trading until May. That's a take. That's a take. All right. Let's talk about some better news. Pyth Network partners with Portfino to expand its live price feed. Shout out to Pyth, Maslana Oracle. I have a bag of it. It's been taking a little bit of a dent. I'm worried about its tokenomics. Uh, not the best tokenomic situation. Hits a big cliff 
uh, May 1st. But, you know, um, it's only a couple thousand. I'm, I'm probably just going to ride this one out. It's not like a 10,000 plus position. Uh, I think I have around 5,500 5, in Python. So I think I'm just going to ride that one out. Um, I, I have not decided. I'll be honest with you guys. I have not decided yet if I'm going to play a jump in, jump out. If I play a jump in, jump out, I'll probably only sell 70% of each bag in case I'm wrong. Yeah, because then, you know, if you if you still say if I'm wrong, say I'm wrong on my jump out, my 30 percent of everything will still catch gains. And then I'll just buy back in with what I have. I, I don't feel that bad about that. Uh, but if I'm right, you know. It, it It's it's all conditional. It, it's completely conditional. Uh, a lot like a lot of my trades are conditional. I, I operate in if then statements. If this happens, we do this. If this happens, if we do that, I react to the market. That's what that's what you should do. Uh, and I have not decided yet, and I, and I don't have to decide yet. You know, I don't have to. Let's keep it rolling. Coinbase pushes for UK crypto adoption with Apple Pay integration. Well, maybe we will take a page out of their book for the love of God. Um. Uh, I'm not even going to go into that story. Interesting. Bitcoin hits record low reserves. Sparks supply shock warning. Bitcoin plunged to below 2 million in reserve. Hints at an imminent price surge. Okay. A little bully, na bully narrative here. I like that. We're waking up. We're waking up. Bitcoin's exchange reserves have plunged to new lows, dipping below 2 million Bitcoin. This able representing less than 10% of the circulating supply. The decrease hints at a su potential supply shock. So, you know, the supply is falling before the supply gets cut in half. Uh, and it's stuff like this why, why I'm still long-term bullish. Like, I, I think people really misunderstand my, like, warning-type videos. Um, but first of all, I, I've been nailing calls lately. If you've been in my Telegram group, they can vouch for me. I have been just boom, nailing calls lately. And a lot of them have been shorts. Um, and the thing with that is that people think because I'm saying, Hey, like, oh, look at the volume, you know, like this, this, look at this confluence. So like, look at this bearish divergence. Like, you know, look at you know, oh, yeah. Like, you know, people don't like that. Like, like people get like angry at me and I'm like, man, like I, 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 I'm a technical, you know, I, I do technical analysis. So I'm going to tell you if the market's going to go up and I, I'm going to tell you if I think the market's going to go down, like, what do you want me to do? You know, so um, and the thing is, is that people misunderstand. They misunderstand and they think that I'm not long term bullish. Hell yeah, I'm long term bullish. Hell yeah. Come on, everybody. What do you think? I'm, I, 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 I do crypto to lose money. What? 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 Like, I, I'm here to make money. That's for facts. But like, just because I think there's going to be a temporary dip that'll last a couple months isn't no, that's not that doesn't say it uh, doesn't mean I don't think we're going to rip. Like, don't, don't get me wrong, people. Don't get me wrong. Um, all right. So I think those are the stories I had pulled. If anybody here wants to sign up for my Telegram group, ajalphagroup at gmail.com, send me an email and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you in there. I uh, got uh, over 90 people in there. We're creeping up on 100. Love to get it to 100 soon. It's a great group. It's a great group. Uh, man, just, it, it really motivates me because I know that, you know, there's a lot riding on it and uh, I've been taking my TA and I've been you know, waking up earlier in the mornings and uh, I've been grinding a little extra heavy lately and um, I'm going to, I got, I got the fire lit inside here and I'm going to keep it rolling because I, I really do want to help as many people as I can. So if you want to join the group, send me an email, AJ group at gmail.com to be fair. This is a private group. It's a paid private group. You cannot find the group if you search for it on Telegram. Do not get in those groups. There's a bunch of scam groups with my face that I tried to report and can't get taken down of people saying, oh, if you send me a hundred a hundred dollars, I'll send you a thousand. Like, no, would I do that? Like, seriously, no, I wouldn't. Uh, but so it's a private group. And the only way you get in is if you send me an email, complete the checklist, and I, me, will personally add you in the group myself. All right. So there you go. Um, 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 um. 
Thank you, Karen. She said the video last night was fire. No problem. I got you, fam. I really do appreciate you. Crypto Lux, do you think Cardano is dead? No, I don't. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't. Uh, do I think it has lagged behind in some areas? Yeah, but so is XRP. And so is, you know, so have a lot of things. That doesn't Just because people are getting impatient doesn't mean it's dead. There's a big di difference between impatient and, and dead. All right. You know, I, I'm certainly long term bullish on Cardano. Don't get me wrong about that. Um, um, all right. Check in the chat. Ellie, how much is the group? So I do. I, at first, I did not want to do one month tryouts because one month is not nearly enough time to learn my strategy. But then I figured, you know, I should do one month tryouts because then people will want to be in the group for longer. So one month, it's like $42. And then there's a three month package, six months, one year and platinum. And one year is 360. And then uh, that that is the cheapest per month. It's like 30 per month where everything else is. Uh, it's like 32 per month or 35 per month based off of it. So all you do is. Um, you pay with with Tether. It's all in the email. If you want information on it, all you got to do is send me an email at ajalphagroup at gmail.com and I'll get you signed up. No problem. Um, but thanks for asking. I do appreciate you. <clears throat> okay, so going to look at a couple charts and then I'm going to rip through these portfolios. Um, this one really hurts my heart because this is, you know, I've been very vocal about this project, the graph. The graph, you know, has... Again, lost support resistance has, you know, kind of fallen down the hill here. It can really fall, you know, to 30, 29 cents and technically still be in an uptrend. Uh, when you zoom out big time on the graph, uh, the, this is kind of the scary part of it is because, you know, uh, I don't mean to draw that. <clears throat> I, I really liked when the graph was trying to get back into that triangle. And of course, that ended up being where it was support it is now resistance you know that does happen that is a part of it and it's kind of coming down red dot on the daily don't like to see it but at least there is some volume here you know notice these levels here that could catch you know at you know 28 24 i think my average graph buy is around like 17 cents or something like that it's pretty cheap um i i got into this one way early on so i'm still up in the grand scheme of things but I am definitely trying to uh, not be around if it goes from 32 to 24. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's kind of when you look at kind of the larger time frames is when you kind of get a gist for uh, the reality of it. So, you know, there is support resistance here at 29 as well. I would like to see that level held. Uh, and also, this is a pretty big level right here, too right here and we're dancing on we're dancing with the devil right there right now on that one that we are sitting on support resistance so let's just hope that you know what i always say is that you're in a downtrend until you're not right so let's just say that we stay in this downtrend and we don't have any plunges below the downtrend let's stay in the downtrend and break out of it eventually then you know that that's fine that's fine because though at the because the angle of this downtrend isn't like that aggressive you know what i mean i mean it would take worst case they are may to be at 22. I mean, that gives us time. You know, it, it gives us time to, to make that decision. Oh, did I mean to move that? But yeah. Oh, just had another alarm go off on the graph on another chart. Wonderful. <laughs> it, it just be like that right now. All right. We talked about the SP. We talked about Bitcoin at length. Uh, all right. We, Solana, Solana. So, you know, this level for me, you know, I've been talking about Solana. I, I made that. We need to talk about Solana video last Friday. The, the moment I put that video out, this was Solana's price. Uh, we are down 8% since then. Solana kind of has two big SR levels. Um, I forget exactly from where this one comes from. Oh, yeah. So this is like the, the local low. I mean, you know, on the way up, that was the test of the 200. The difference between, so this is the thing with Solana on the two hour is that the last time, let me get rid of that line. The last time we touched this, came down to this level from this wick right here, that was a retest of the 200 day. Now, 
where this line was drawn was basically right after we had a death cross on the two hour. So the conditions of this of this touch are diff is of the touch of this level is different because before we were bullishly retesting off the 200. At this point, we lost the 50. So it's two. We're at the same price, but in two completely different scenarios. Um, the, you know, the loss of 162 that is the final boss for Solana. Uh, at if we lose that level. You could basically bet your bottom dollar we're going to 150, uh, maybe 130. All right. So, you know, I, I am have every right to be worried when it comes to support resistance. And I have every right to be worried when it comes to that idea combined with volume. Um, Pyth, two hour chart, also had a death cross. Uh, currently holding support resistance at 73 cents. That one, you know, kind of comes back from here. The level of levels on Pyth is at 67 cents um that is the level especially when you consider volume i'm just kind of going over charts quickly right now whiff oh man dude this thing let me tell you about whiff and how much we've been trading it over in the group uh this was a level we talked about in the video if you went off the break of that level we talked about this level right here this uh 353 level in the video i made yesterday if you went off the first alarm if the alarm went off on your phone and you went short top to bottom you would have made five no excuse me 6.6 .6 percent in 12 hours if you perfectly nailed it but the money's made in the middle so i hope i hope some of you at least made uh you know three or four percent i hope uh the good thing about this is that there is you know bullish divergence on the small time frames here hopefully whiff can fight fight above this this coin is extremely volatile uh some people might hate that but that's why i trade this chart look at look at this chart aj chart graffiti 101 this is why i'm here the, the, this charts like this that move like this is why you know this is what i'm doing um look at the one hour i mean the one hour really doesn't look that bad uh anchor wave trigger wave trigger wave bullish divergence um the two hour isn't as div you know it has a nice curvature with a green dot on the two hour but you really see the divergence best on the one hour and you know so let's hope it gets back up because right now the price is right here okay but let you know let's hope if whiff could get back above this same support resistance level i would be comfortable longing it not to mention the hammer indicator the hammer candle reversal uh candle right there so there you go um take a quick look at ton coin ton coin still holding this strong line uh you know this has kind of been a little big you know big level for ton that it's been holding and it is at the top layer band of this uptrend here so, you know, of course, if ton loses this level, you could get a scalp short, you know, maybe to the bottom, not maybe if an, even if it only goes to the 200 and say the 200 keeps moving and we lost that from that support resistance level to the 200. I mean, that's still like an 8% trade. I, I, I have, you know, actually, I, I, did I not set that alarm? What the, what the hell is wrong with me? Damn, AJ, practice what you preach, dog. Maybe I have it set on a separate chart. Hard to tell, but it's set now. All right, cool. And, um, phantom last chart i'll talk about then i'll do rate my portfolio uh man we've this is another chart that we trade basically every day in the group uh just look at this thing i've been here before uh you know so basically what has happened is phantom was in was in this downtrend it uh broke out of it all right it's kind of in its own little uptrend now if you kind of consider you know that being like the gist of it all right um you know let me draw the other way i gotta pull that down bang 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 just oh okay now my computer's frozen up sorry about that yeah so you know that's the gist of the phantom uptrend local phantom uptrend and now it has really best bounced in this range so you know we had a conditional trade here where if it broke this level long uh from top to bottom that was uh, an 11 percent trade in one day shout out to anybody in the group who nailed that one um and these conditional trades have just been ripping for people dude because it makes it so simple like okay if you do this you do this if you do this you do that and uh boom I mean, it has been quite the ride for that trade. You know, you did come up here and then we hit this support resistance level and, and, you know, we ride it back down and then we hit that support resistance level. We ride it all the way back up. This is why I like Phantom. There's so much juice to squeeze. Look, not all right. From this level, we get into this range. From this range, we go to the top, hit support resistance. We go to the bottom, we hit support resistance. We go back to the top and then we go back to the bottom with each move being an 8% move. Do you see how easy that is to trade? Do you guys see why I like trading Phantom so much? It's so predictable. It's so predictable. But now we're in a scenario where this is the... All right, let me get rid of some of the chart graffiti here. So this is 
Okay, I think that circle was there from maybe last night. Okay, so this is the most important support resistance level for Phantom to get above. You know, that's your long scenario right here at 103. Okay, this is the has been the level it's been holding at 96. But the thing is, is that this uptrend that it's in is starting to you know kind of get in the way of it doing this. So we this is very interesting for Phantom. It's in quite the predicament. Excuse me, because you know Phantom is either going to have the oscillators don't look half bad either. So basically. It, it could crawl its way up, you know? Is it going to respect that uptrend? Or is it just going to bounce and go back to the top of the range like it has already done one, two, three, four times now? You know? So this did keep your clo close eye on this one. I, I don't really have anything for you right now because it looks like it's headed down and I wouldn't take a 1% short. I'm not going for that. But, uh, you know, that also set the alarm on this level. You know, this level is at 96 cents. If you lose this level, we lose that uptrend at the same time. You know, if we lose the uptrend and support resistance at the same time, that is a short. That is the short of all shorts. All right. So set, set those alarms on Phantom. Copy my two hour, copy my 12 minute chart right here. Ignore all this stuff. Just get these support resistance levels. This level at 96 cents. This level at a dollar three. And then these trend lines touching those and then touching these okay there are there are your levels to copy set those alarms everybody set those alarms all right i'm going to do a quick rate my portfolio i got 100k algo tokens things not enough nope not enough not even close not even close um uh panic selling will get you wrecked uh, okay dude well there's a difference between panic selling Panic selling would require me to be panicked, which I'm not because I'm super ice cold, cold blooded when it comes to trading crypto. My connection with money is completely, I'm completely disconnected from my money. So if we lose important support resistance levels that lead into low volume node with bearish divergence on large time frames, yes, I'm going to sell some of my money and buy back in lower. You don't have to do that. But when the market takes a 30% dip and you took a 30% dent, you know, there's the other side of that coin. You know, it's not like I haven't been doing this for years. So there you go. Uh, let's do these rate my portfolios. We'll keep it rolling here. I just um, got to keep it real. I keep it real. Uh, where is the damn portfolio? Okay, here's the first one. My guy, Steve Jones. Can you do a portfolio review, please? I need a 10x, 30 grand. 20% uh, algo, 20 vet, 10, 8, wait, 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 20 algo, 20 vet, 10 H bar, 10 graph, 10, 8 gala, link, 8 alluvium, 8 st stacks, quant. Algo vet, H bar, graph, gala, link, alluvium, stacks, quant. I mean, I don't hate it, man. I don't hate that bag. I mean, it's pretty even. It has a fairly even distribution. It, um, you know, you don't have any anchors, but that's fine because you're trying to 10x. This is a 10x bag. You know, this is a bag that you are in coins that have room to run. Uh, the largest market cap in this is Link with only 8%. So I guess Link Link works as an anchor, in my opinion. Uh, I think this is a fairly even spread. Um, would I like it more if it was 15 algo, 15 quant, 15 H bar, 15 graph. Yes. I would like that more instead of 20, 20, 10, 10. Uh, but I'm always going to encourage even distributions because you, you, you are in a situation where if anything goes wrong with algo or if anything goes wrong with that, uh, you know, you can basically kiss that 10 X goodbye. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. Obviously these are two of my favorite projects in crypto, but you know, you, you know, even my favorite, anything could happen at any given time to any single project, which is why I will always encourage an even distribution. Um, you know, because you don't you don't want your entire bag to be tethered to the to the fate of one single project. Never put yourself in that situation. You always want to have you know think about that distribution. Other than that, man, I love your bag. I think you have good you have coin you have a good coin selection. Uh, you have you know relatively good distribution. I'm going to give you an 85. Good job, Steve. My guy, Steve Jones, with that banger. Uh, Yu-Yo. Uh, I think this... Is that one of them from today? No, that's not one from today. You know why? That's one from yesterday, I think. Because I think these two are from today. Let me pull that one. 
And then, yeah, that one's from 4.9. I'm glad I caught that. All right, so now we have this one. Mackie Powers, $220,000 with 30% in PAL AI. Holy shit. 18% Pyth, 12 Algo, excuse me, 12 Graph, Algo Caspa 10, HBAR 9, Flux, Aero, GFI. Uh, looking to add 5,000 to each one. Yeah, man. So um, you're you're very top heavy into a project that's outside the top 200. Uh, what, what what would that be? Pal, uh, Pal AI. Mackie says that he's looking for a six to eight. And Pal and Pyth were earlier picks, and that's why, why they are so high. That makes much more sense. Thanks for clarifying that. That does make a difference. Um, yeah, Pal is currently number 220 with only a 580.7 million dollar market cap uh you know 65 percent tokenomics not that bad uh man like dude so i get it i get it but you know that also implies that you didn't take profits with either of those and they both had meteoric rises um and all right mackie you know what my problem with your portfolio is you, know, you want to know what my problem with your portfolio is is that you're looking for a 6 to 8x and you have a 12x bag. You have a 10 to 12x bag and you're only looking for a 6 to 8x. Uh, I would not suggest being that top heavy into anything. Um, I'm not telling you to sell. I'm not telling you not to do anything. But personally me, I would not have a, a portfolio that's that top heavy. Uh, if anything happens to PAL, you know, that's it. You know, the other... A uh, big percentage of your bag is going to is going to be fighting. You know that other sixty eight percent is going to struggle. So, um, I I mean I told you, I mean you're taking it's a really risky bag. You're taking on a lot of risk with a lot of money, and it's a high risk high reward situation. Uh, I wish you had better distribution. That's all. That's all I could really say is that I don't hate your picks, but I wish you had a better distribution. Uh, I'm going to give you the likelihood of you achieving your goal. Very high. But that distribution scares the shit out of me. So you're going to get an 80, 82. 82 for Mackie. High, high likelihood, but scary distribution. Final portfolio of the day. My guy, Ivan Tupac. $145,000 portfolio. My uh, fellow six-figure homie over here. 10x goal. We're looking for um, 14. All right. 14% HBAR algo, ADA, ETH, Y, the graph, VET, XRP, LINK, Quant, ICP, also 20K dry powder. Okay, sick. Sick, 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 sick. So um, at, at that much money, at that much, oh, SWLF Crypto says Mackie is definitely groggering. Hell yeah, Mackie's groggering. Big time grogger. At first, I kind of, I my my brain kind of twitched when I said Ethereum, but I understand because you have a hundred and forty five thousand dollar portfolio. There is certainly an element of protection that you are trying to play, and I'd rather see you hold uh, Ethereum for that protection. Um, you know, I think I think it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to hold to, if it was Bitcoin, to be honest, because we're talking one hundred forty five thousand dollars here. Let's be honest, uh, Ivan. I I wouldn't advise you to sell. He says willing to sell his Ethereum and XRP in the chat. I, I don't think you need to, man, because, you know, those are large market cap coins and you are trying to protect. You're not, you know, not only are you trying to cop, cop that 10 X, you also are trying to protect that, that 145 K. And uh, so it's OK to have some some anchor picks in that situation. See, there are there's a, I kind of have split down, you know, portfolio strategy in general uh, to you know people with. A strategy for five thousand or less, a strategy for twenty thousand or less, and then you know fifty thousand, hundred thousand, million plus. And in your situation, you know certainly an element of protection is very important um, for a bag of that size, one hundred percent. So, also a good question from Karen Harris: What are you planning to buy with your dry powder? That's a good question. Uh, for the next dip, he's saying. Um, so you're leading H bar algo together. So with so you have 20%, 31% of your bag is top 10 picks with 38% top 20-ish. Yeah, because link. Oh, and yeah, ICP. So you do have a really good, you know, your large cap picks are good. Um 
he's looking for an RA RWA um project. Well, you are holding he's looking for RWA and AI. He is holding V Chain, Algo, H bar, all on all RWA and the graph AI. So you do have some of those bases covered. But I see you if you want to get into like Arrow or Ondo or something like that, I wouldn't hate it. Um yeah, man, like I like it. I like it. I think that you do have a lot of top 10 picks. Ivan, I, I think that I mean you're at 145,000. You're going to you're going to be at 165,000 and it sounds to me like if you get to a million, I think that'd be straight. So I don't I don't know with that many top 10 picks if you can really bet your bottom dollar on a 10x with this bag be considering 11 ADA, 11 ETH, 9 XRP. I mean, you're you're asking every one of those uh, you're either asking all three of those top 10 picks to 10x themselves or the other, you know, 60% of your portfolio to work overtime. All right. But at the same time, there is that element of protection, which is why with $145,000, you know, you should be aiming for maybe a little, I, I would temper expectations, uh, shoot for a seven to eight X, maybe a six to seven X even. Um, and with, you know, 160,000, you're getting pretty close to a million anyway. You know, so um, I don't hate your bag. I think it's consistent. I like your element of protection. If this was a if this was a a five thousand dollar portfolio, I would tell you to take on way more risk. But it's not a five thousand dollar portfolio. We're talking, you know, almost one hundred fifty thousand dollars here, and that's a lot of money. And you need to protect it just as much as you want to grow it. So um, temper expectations. Look for a six to eight x, unless you want to take on more risk. You know, got to ask yourself that question. That's a personal decision. Uh, if you said I was looking for a six to eight and you gave me this portfolio, I'd give you a 95. But since you're looking for a 10, um, I'm going to give you like an 85. 85. Good job, Ivan. And is the theory, average cost for Ethereum is 1500. But you also have to consider, Ivan, do you really think Ethereum is going to 10x from here? That, you know, that's why I had I had to pull your score down a little bit. Do you really think Ethereum is going to 10x from here? I mean, I mean, bro, we're talking a $418 billion market cap. Um, uh, the coinperspective.com. All right, Ethereum. It's already waiting for me, Ethereum. If Ethereum 10x, Oh, you're only looking for a $4.2 trillion market cap. That ain't happening, bro. Ethereum's not going to 10x. It's not going to happen. Ethereum, could it ever go to $34,000? Yes, it could. But not this bull run. No way. Ethereum's not going to $4.2 trillion. There is no scenario where Ethereum goes to $4.2 trillion. Um, you know, even, even a 5x would require a $2.1 trillion. That's very unlikely. And your your entire bags, you're trying to 10x. You know what? A 2x is still shy of a trillion, a double up. You're looking for a 10x. The rest of your portfolio is working big overtime, man. But you have an element of protection, which is why much larger bags like yours, you know, you're you're, you're not trying to, you know, I wouldn't if I had that exact amount of money i wouldn't be trying to 10x i wouldn't be trying to 10x because you want to have that element of protection i, I wouldn't have uh, uh one of my ten thousand portfolio builds because those builds are riskier builds on purpose higher risk higher reward but when you're talking six figures higher risk gets scary so you want to play you want to you want to play it a little bit safe unless unless you have complete abandon and you don't care and you want to 10x. If if you're that determined to 10x, you you do have to just consider everything I just said, like big time. Um, I just had an alarm go off for Phantom. I wanted to see which one it was, but now I can't find the damn Phantom chart. Okay, well I give up. I give up on trying to find that chart. Very strange. Okay, well you guys rock, each and every one of you. Still over 200 people in the house. This was a really good show. I think this is the best show we had all week. You guys are amazing. Thank you for each and every one of you. Um, 
Ivan, best of luck, bro. You have a good portfolio. I just want you to think about what I said. If anybody wants to sign up for the Telegram group, ajalphagroup at gmail.com. Send me an email. We'll get you through the checklist. We'll get you set up. I'm out. I'm going to Las Vegas. I'm going to Vegas. Wish me luck. I'm going to go watch the fights. Going to interview Jake from VChain. Going to make some content. Going to meet up with Jada, the Glitter Queen. Haven't seen her in a couple of weeks. I miss my girl. I paid for her engagement ring. I know she's not watching the show, so don't tell her. Don't tell anybody. Don't keep your mouth shut. You didn't hear that? Get rich. Don't get wrecked. I love you guys. I'll, I'll be around. I'll be around. Keep it snazzy. Later.